Hi, uh, welcome to another podcast of How You Got Placed, and today we have Nikhil Anna, who is placed in uh, a very renowned MNC and a dream company for most of you, Oracle. And uh, now let us know from the man himself, his name Nikhil Nandan. So hi, Anna, welcome hi. to How You Got Placed. Thank you. How are you feeling? How is all this? Nervous, right? Because. Uh, I am getting tensed about our, uh, my brain sometimes get freeze like it's happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not hiring you right now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <beautiful. clears throat> uh, so, go ahead. So, yeah, the first question is, uh, how did you miss your IIT? Yeah, I missed it out because it, is, it was pretty unlucky for me. Uh, as I had got some pretty decent ranks, not excellent ranks in all the entrance. What, what do you mean by excellent? Uh, let me give you some examples. I've got a rank of 115 in Geetham entrance test, 498 in SRM, SRM with entrance test, uh, 200 in KL University, and of some 420 ish change in uh, with SRM entrance test. And uh, the bad luck on me was I couldn't do as good as I used to do in the practice exams in our college. Uh, in the actual exam, uh, which is why I'm here rather than being in some IIT. <laughs> so, uh, there were two attempts for mains at when I was giving my mains. So, one was I could score about 97.5 percentile, and in the second attempt, I could push that up to 98.5, which is not a pretty good uh, number if you want to get placed into some NITs. Again, then, uh, uh, once I got around 98.5, I shifted my focus to BitSat rather than focusing on advanced. But then even BitSat, it was an unlucky instance for me where I used to score about 340 in the practice tests conducted in our college. But then again, in the main exam, I have perfectly managed to screw it up. <laughs> Just got an exact score of 300, which is not suitable to get into ECE or CA circuit branch. Yep. Okay, so why did you do you? Uh, one thing, uh, my rank allowed me to get into JNTU. Second thing, it is a 10 minute travel from my home. And the third thing, obviously, it's a government college. You have uh, fees which are pretty low. You can get educated at quite a low budget. Okay. So, all these three factors contributed to me being in JNTU. So, w what were your expectations from this college? Uh, given the standard of the college in the na normal society, I have expected pretty lot. But then again, the term government also <laughs> <laughs> puts that expectations on the back foot. So, yeah, I had pretty normal expectations. One thing I heard from uh, a lot of people is in JNTU, you don't get a spoon feeding like in other colleges where professors are behind you and they insist you to uh, pursue your goals, do your uh, practice a different and learn different technologies. Here you are on, on your own. You have to learn everything on your own. You have to be, uh, you have to be behind the professors and uh, you don't get much attention. So yeah, that's what I was expecting and that is the way it is. And a few uh, places where I was, you know, I was expecting even more from this college, but yeah, time and again it proved it. <laughs> it proved itself. <laughs> okay, what were they? Uh, coming to, you know, the fee payment where you have to stand, uh, in, even in 2023, you have to stand in the line to get your fee payment done and then have to go, go travel back to the Poise Hostel again <laughs> to get the non hostel stamp. And, uh, you know, where in COVID times where every other college is conducting online exams, we still had to come physically and write the offline exams, which is pretty frustrating. And, uh, you know, that academic schedule was entirely screwed up because of that. You had uh, uh, exams delayed by about five months. You have uh, semesters which have started even when the previous semester's exams were not done. So, yeah. <laughs> so, that's the way it is. I can't change it. Nobody can change it. Cool. cool. Um, so what did you do in your fresher year? Uh, yeah, was it like, and what was your experience <clears throat> with your seniors? Yeah, coming to seniors, uh, I have met a few of them, not much. 
only three to four people. I don't know uh, any more people after that. Not even now. I don't know more people from who are direct seniors to us. Uh, yeah, come in my fr first year. Uh, I was pretty bored with the routine subjects that everyone used to have. Being a computer. Wait, but by the way, <laughs> <laughs> sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. What was the score in BW? Man, I don't remember, man. <laughs> I don't even remember my last year, Mr. CGP. You're asking me for something from the first year. True. Yeah, but I guess it was around eight, eight, eight or nine, I'm not sure. That was one pre pretty big subject. Uh, there is this engineering drawing. No comments on that. <laughs> yeah, chemistry, which is somewhat better. And applied physics, again, no comments on that. Mm. Maths, I like maths, so I enjoyed it. But then again, the only uh, technical subject which we had related to CSE in the first year was C language, mm. which I already learned before joining JNTU uh, in the two months of gap which I had between uh, JE Advanced and the time where I had to join, join the college. So, yep, and again, I started learning C++ in my uh, first year, second semester. Mm. Um, but then again, you know what happened in March 2020, so that's another story. <laughs> so, when did this uh, lockdown thing happen to you and how did it affect you? Yeah, lockdown was... I had not. It was quite difficult in some ways because you miss all the interactions with your friends, with your... Uh, yeah, all the fun in the college. But then, uh, when I was getting pretty bored, I was suggested by my dad uh, to pursue courses in Udemy. But... Uh, in the first, I was reluctant in the first, but then slowly started to kick in. I used to work around 10 plus hours sitting on the computer and then binge watching courses, uh, not series, which most others do. Uh, I don't know, I was in, I would say I was in a sweet spot there uh, because I couldn't, I, if you ask me to sit 10 plus hours in front of a computer right now and do with the courses which I did, earlier or some of new other courses I couldn't I can't I will not be able to do it yep so uh, that was a sweet, sweet spot and uh, yep so that is one phase of my VTech where I had where I think I had progressed the m most during your lockdown yep okay so what what were the course uh, courses which you enrolled as in through uh, yeah so starting with uh, I started with HTML, CSS for time pass, mm. uh, but then uh, that was the course which pulled, pulled me in mm. and then I built two real websites which are deployed. They're still running. Just front end or you under the database? No, no, no. It's just the front end. And then uh, for the back end part, there was this service called Netlify which could collect the date details and then present it to you. So I didn't have to do any back end part. Mm. And then I switched on to Bootstrap. Bootstrap is another uh, uh, kit which you can use to accelerate your CSS progress. But then again, uh, as a non-creative guy, I realized that this HTML CSS is not for me. Uh, because, you know, website building and all, it involves a lot of creative and colorful depictions, right? So I thought it was not for me and I decided to move on with the backend. So I started with Java. And that course is pretty huge as I'll say it's pretty huge it's a length of 8 and 80.5 hours mm. and if you could what is it it is related to the backend development or just no. only the java course no it's just a java in entirety okay so you have uh, server coding as well as the basics mm. so entire course was about 80.5 hours mm. which if you could complete uh, two hours of course a day mm. it would take around 40 days so do you recommend this course to the students right now uh, when yes, uh, because it contains everything from the basics as well as server-side programming. Uh, there is this one particular module where you'll be coding uh, the client program and the server program. So either either way, they'll be running your local machine, but then you can see the communication that happens between uh, a, a program running in your device and then a program that is running in your server. So essentially, in this case, both are the same device, but then you'll get an idea of... Un and understanding of how data is being transferred from one state in the world to another state in the world. So this is what you've learned in the Java course? Yes. So in case you're interested, we'll link it in the description. Do check it out.
so yeah, that that was regarding the Java Java. Java. Apart from Java development, uh, what are the other new technologies which you learned? Yeah, so once Java is done, I started with Python. But uh, fun fact, even before I started Python, I was against Python because it is a slow language. It ha- it made the life of developers easy, but which it shouldn't be. You need to have complete control about what you're coding. But then once I got into Python, I realized why most of them are switching from Java and other languages to Python. So I started loving it. And now Py- Python... Why? What, what's the reason everyone's jumping from Java and Zero to slow? Uh, because of the simplicity, you don't have to uh, code about, uh, you know, if, it, if you talk about Java, if you simply, simply have to write a, a program which prints out Hello World, you, ha- you need you have the English system. Uh, yeah, uh, all of that. You need about five lines of coding. R- Python, you can do it with a single line. Just mm-hmm. type out print Hello World and it does it. And you have a lot of inbuilt functions which you, don't, which you can happily rely on. Mm-hmm. You have a lot of uh, open source libraries, mm-hmm. which are highly used in machine learning and data science fields. Yep, so that is, I realized why Python is kicking in, and then I got into the flow as well. <laughs> so, let's suppose there is a student mm-hmm. who, who doesn't know anything about programming, and what would you suggest him to be his first programming language? Would it be Java, C++, or would it be, would it be Python? Uh, I would go with the traditional approach, start with C, because then you'll understand what the complexities are, mm. and then... You need to start with a difficult language and then move on to simpler ones, because if you start with a simpler one and then you have to move on to the difficult language, you'll find it pretty boring. You'll not even make efforts to learn it. Uh, which is, most of the beginners actually start with Python and then move to Java. That was one thing which I uh, luckily escaped from. I started with Java and then moved on to Python. So now, I can happily code in Java as well as Python. But though Python is my primary language, I can code in Java as well. But then, if you start with Python and then move on to Java, you'll be fed up. Mm-hmm. within a week or two, depending upon uh, relying on the heavy syntax errors, etc. Heavy uh, stuff code which you have to work on. Mm-hmm. And also the functions which were inbuilt in Python, you have to port them manually in Java as well. So mm-hmm. that is one thing a lot of uh, people who start with Python and then move on to Java, C++, etc. face headache with. So when did you start preparing for DSA? And what were the resources you used? Uh, yeah, so starting with DSA, I started preparing for DSA in second year. Uh, the first website which I started working on is HackerRank because it's pretty user-friendly and the questions were quite beginner-friendly as well. So once HackerRank is done, again, I moved away from DSA part. I started focusing on my machine learning part. And again, when the placements started to boom up, in third year, and uh, third year of second semester, I started working with the DSA again. Mm. Moved with the code chef. Mm. Code chef. Sorry, what was that? Lead code. Yep, it was lead code. So yeah, again, lead code is like once you can finish with hacker rank, it's suggested to move to lead code because the questions are not as easy as high- hacker rank, and they are challenging as well. Mm. Uh, so again, a lot of interview questions which you will be facing in interviews will already be there in lead code. So that is how I started working on lead code. And I made a habit of completing at least 10 questions each week. Each week? Each week, yeah. And putting them down in an Excel sheet. So if I find some question interesting, and but then I had no more to do it on that day, I would put it in the sheet and then do it some other day. Okay, so basically you've created your own SD practice sheet. Kind of, yep. A low, a jugard <laughs> SD practice sheet. <laughs> okay. With an Excel sheet, that's it. So you didn't try any other SD sheets like SD sheet by Striver, no. Or Geeks for Geeks, no. Why? Uh, because I was unaware of it, one thing. And I find what I was doing pretty good. Mm. So I didn't have to rely on some other SD sheet ports, sheet, sheet sheets, okay. uh, DSA sheets, etc. I found my technique to be working for me. Mm. So I just went down with it. Okay, so what made you choose Hacker Rank? as your first resource to practice DS? Oh uh, yeah, so I, if you can ask anyone in the industry, they'll suggest hacker rank because yeah, it is beginner friendly. The UI is simple, mm-hmm. the questions are beginner friendly mm-hmm. and they will transform you from a stage where you are a complete beginner mm-hmm. to a stage where you are in, at an intermediate level. Okay. By the time you could finish about 90-ish percent of questions in hacker rank. Okay. 
and then the questions in lead code will start to take over from your intermediate stage to an advanced stage. Yeah. So again, this is all coincidence. It does not pre-plan that first I have to start with hacker rank and then move on to lead code. I just started with hacker rank and then when I was wondering what next a year later when hacker rank was done, then I found out lead code to be pretty useful for the people who have only done with hacker rank. So coming to DSA, what I have heard from most of the seniors is uh, most of them have ignored graphs. Because all companies don't ask questions related to graphs. Yes. They are confined to trees, uh, uh, stacks, queues, linked list, and just that. So, did you ignore graphs while practicing DSA? Mm -hmm. Or did you learn graphs too? And whether you have faced a situation where a company has asked you questions from graphs? Yeah. Another fun fact. I realized that I skipped graphs. When you were asking me this question, <laughs> <laughs> I skipped <it. laughs> I skipped graphs. Graphs is not important. No, don't think like that. <laughs> no, no, no. Never think like that. If you find time, do with graphs. But then again, you are right in saying that companies mostly focus on linked lists, arrays, uh, trees. Trees are the most focused part. Even if you go to link lead code and then search questions based on topic wise, you'll find around thousand questions on arrays. Uh, 300, 500 ish questions on linked lists. So, those are the most popular ones. Whereas, you are limited uh, by the functionality of graphs, and there is not much scope to develop questions and tricky questions on graphs. But again, saying it's a warning not to ignore it, but then, yep, as you rightly said, it was one of the least asked questions. So, uh, you've practiced DSE since your second year? Yes. So it's when were you placed? I mean, in which which semester? Uh, fourth year, first semester. So you had like around one and a half year to practice DSA. Yes. Were you consistent? No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> uh, so what were the total number of questions solved by? Okay, when it comes to hacker rank, uh, it will it will be around uh, in there are different languages as well, right? So if you can just check my hacker rank profile, you'll find uh, five star five star Java bats, five star Python bats, etc. But then coming to the number of questions, I get I guess there will be around 150 to 200 of hack, hacker rank, and then 120 on lead code. Hmm. That's a good number. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of consistency, uh, there was a time frame of one and a half year, but then I was hardly doing the questions for about three months. Or four months. Okay, so rest of the time you were involved in machine learning. Yes. And also, type us. <laughs> some days, you know, it's like, some days you not feel like doing anything. Some days of life you not feel like doing anything. But then again, you'll realize that you have to do something. So yeah, once I done... We are a ticket. Yeah. Uh, I done with hacker rank. But then again, I took a break about uh, three to four months where I was doing literally nothing. And only focusing on the academics part. But again, like you said, real thinking. <laughs> so you, you'll realize that you have to work hard, and then again, lead course started. Mm. Yeah. So that's the way it has gone for me. Okay. So now we are done with DSC. Mm. So we'll get into your uh, development. Okay. Development phase. Okay. I mean, uh, why did you choose machine learning over web development? As the majority chooses web development. Yeah, because it's easy, beginner friendly. Yep. And machine learning is somewhat complex. The, the name itself is confusing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I tried to convince women that turn the machine learning for those in that we can leave it. So why machine learning and uh, what what's wrong with web development? Uh, there's nothing wrong with web development, you know. Uh, it's just not for cre non creative guys like me. For web development, you need to be creative. You need to have that artistic skill where you can build beautiful websites uh, that are intriguing and eye pleasing. But I realize I'm not as so much of a creative guy. I don't have that much of uh, artistic skills. I'm a very bad artist. I can't draw well as well. So again, it was a phase where Python was booming because of machine learning. You know how big of a buzzword machine learning is and artificial intelligence. People use artificial intelligence in everything. You have artificial intelligence refrigerators right now. Artificial intelligence washing machines. Yeah, so that I got up on the bus train. And, uh, you know, I had another friend of mine, Chaddi Buddy friend. 
uh, he was uh, placed in a uh, not placed he joined a college vijit in a branch called artificial intelligence and he was some of the influencing factor on me for me to jump on the machine learning hype train mm. <laughs> so i got a light and yeah it's good going good uh, machine learning as you said it is not exactly quite complex or uh, you need to have the pa- passion you need to be good at math you need to be good at statistics uh well yeah compared to web development where most of them find it beginner friendly because it is easy you don't have to have much of skills you don't, you need only uh, creativity and uh, some coding knowledge about html css etc but when it comes to machine learning you need to be good at math again uh you need to have proper understanding of statistics you need to be good at uh, d- data collection etc you need to be also involved in data science so th- all these factors are involved in machine learning uh, and also you need to understand the theoretical part suppose you are applying a machine learning model let's say a linear regression you need to understand what the linear regression is uh, all the formula behind it logistic regression there is some theory behind it even artificial neural networks have a lot of theory they were developed in 1980s if you believe it or not but then they have come into existence and are emerging right now because of the open source nature of python and a lot of libraries like tensorflow which google has developed uh pytorch is one of them i don't know who developed it yep so yeah you need a lot of knowledge, background knowledge before you implement any machine learning model you need to have a lot of research before you build any model you need to do a lot of data analysis you need to do a lot of data visualization before you build any model only then depending upon your data you need to understand which model you have to build if your data is following a linear pattern you can just build out a linear regression model but then if you have again there are classification uh, there is a classification machine learning uh, you have two types of machine learning one is cla- supervised and unsupervised again in supervised you have a classification and regression so you need to understand all the background part of it to do good in machine learning as aspect okay, so how did you learn machine learning actually oh where it did just the online resources or a course yeah i got on or do you prefer any kind of course yes uh, there were there are few courses which are good uh, when i started my machine learning journey uh, it was still covid time gnt was offering out uh, free coupons for coursera courses which are pretty uh, which are typically around 2000 a course whereas in udemy you can find them for 500 and again uh coursera certificates have a lot of value compared to udemy certificates uh so i started and by the way do you think uh these certificates carry a real value i mean like uh most of the students just keep uh, uploading their uh i i finished this workshop or i finished this two days boot camp yep uh, uh, uh what i think is those certificates don't make much of a difference i mean uh, what would you actually learn in a two days course and and this is not regarding the tourism yeah, yeah uh my question is uh do these certificates really carry a value and are they worth mentioning in your resume uh well yes they are worth mentioning in resume given you have the space in a single sheet if you can mention that i didn't have the space so i didn't i couldn't mention any of those yet many achieved uh <laughs> that's for another day but anyway uh these certificates are worthless if you cannot prove to the other person that you have gained something that you have earned the certificate mm. it's if they feel that it's just something which you have got simply mm. then the certificate has no value mm. you have you need to be uh, showcase that knowledge mm. the the people need to be seeing uh, the certificate the knowledge that you have gained from the particular course or workshop mm. uh, they need to be uh, they need to get an imp- impression that the physical certificate is there and then the knowledge is in your mind only then it will the certificates will have any value but then otherwise no so yeah, now <laughs> let's get into the main stuff okay now let's discuss regarding your placement experience okay. so what were all the companies you applied through campus placements mm-hmm. and what were your experiences <laughs> how many times were you rejected and how did you handle it okay this is a pretty good question to ask Yep. So starting with placements, you know, our first company to approach was TCS. Uh, we had to write an exam. 
and based on the performance in the exam there were two categories in TCS one is called ninja one is called digital the digital is a higher package of around 7 LPA and the ninja is around 3.6 LPA so the distinguished performance in the exam will be selected for digital interviews and the uh, the rest of the guys will be for placed in ninja so again the interviews happened in Gokuraju college for our college as well so it was a pool of different colleges and they were all pulled in Gokraj College. Uh, that was the first time I attended an interview. Uh, neatly tucked. Neatly. Uh, I wore a tie. No, I didn't wear a tie. Okay. So, yeah. That was another... Uh, that day, it rained heavily. You know, you're, you just can't explain how much of rain there was. And also, I was one of the first people to have completed that interview and then got out. But then again, the rain drenched me. I was like completely wet. So, yep. Uh, that experience is good because I got selected. I got selected in digital as well. A uh, few people who couldn't perform well in digital interviews have been demoted to ninja placements. Okay. Uh, so, that was the Kickstarter for me where I, uh, that was the first company. And you know the placement rules, right? You, don't, you can't apply for... Uh, Companies which are coming below and some s- threshold of above. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, uh, since uh, I only know that one particular rule, are, uh, are there any other rules apart from this thing? Yep. Uh, that depends on colleges. Uh, different colleges have different rules. When it comes to our college, uh, the college categorizes companies in three categories. Mm-hmm. One is non dream, mm-hmm. uh, the threshold lies between some lower part to around six lakhs. Mm-hmm. And then comes the dream category between six lakhs and ten lakhs. And the super dream category with above 10 above. So this TCS digital comes under dream category. Okay. So and again, since I have already been offered a 7 lakhs package, I don't have, I didn't have to apply to all the companies which are offering below that. So you were not eligible to apply for any other dream companies? Not dream, non, non-dream. 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 Okay, okay. No. And yeah. your pool you're not applied to, you're not allowed to apply for any. Yes. Okay. And... Uh, Coming to dream companies, there are companies which were offering 9 LPA, 10 LPA, which was still dream, but then you could apply. Mm. Yeah, coming, yeah, well, uh, this come, brings to us to our next uh, company, which is Micron. Mm. Okay. Uh, so it offered around 8, 9 LPA. Mm. Yeah, that was another experience because... Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to ask you. Yep. Uh, what was the interview procedure of this TCS? After you finished your uh, the first round of exam... What was the next step? Okay, so there were two rounds. One is the technical round and the w- other one is the HR round. The HR round, you can expect typical HR questions like uh, where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> uh, would you be able to reload all the stuff which are taught in your English sir? Yes. Uh, and the technical round was quite simple as well. They just ask uh, what are your strengths and the co- areas which you are good at. And then if you could explain them in a fa- in a way, again, talking about the certificates, you need to have the knowledge in your brain. Mm. If the interviewer feels that you have that knowledge in your brain, you're good to go. Okay. So, wh- what was there in the technical round? What was it about? So, yeah, the technical round, uh, there were two people, two interviewees. Mm. Uh, and they asked me what I was good at. I obviously told machine learning and they just asked some very simple questions which I can't recollect right now. Okay. But they're just very simple, like the basics. And <laughs> they felt uh, quite impressed. Mm. So, uh, within an uh, hour, hour and a half, I was in the HR round. Mm. The HR round lasted for about 15-20 minutes. Mm. And then, yep, after a couple of weeks, I got uh, to know that I was placed and then I got the offer letter as well. Okay. So, that's the thing with TCS. Yes. Okay. Now, now what about Micron? Okay. Coming to Micron. Uh, Micron, they as, you, as with any other company, they put a test, qualifying test. Uh, oh. What do you mean by qualifying test? Is it a coding round or it is a written exam? Uh, yeah, it it was a coding round. Uh, there was uh, aptitude as well. Okay. There were a few core subject questions, MCQ type. And yeah, uh, so I was one of the few people who could complete the two coding questions in, ta- in its entirety. Okay. You know how the coding questions are placed, right? You have a, a past cases, test cases. Yes. And, and you also have the time limit. Yeah. Uh, even if the half, you, you can even complete one and a half question if you can pass uh, uh, one entire question and then half of the test cases in the other question. So I was one of the few people who could complete the 
two questions in its entirety okay. the coding questions mm. so i was pretty optimistic that i will be called in for the interview which is the ne- literally the next day mm. so i was preparing but then again a few mood swings here and there whether i'll be selected whether i'll not be called for the interview etc mm. so it was 9 around 10 15 i guess where we got the short list for tomorrow's interview okay mm. and we have to be there in the college by 9 I usually sleep around 9:30 10 and then I had somebody called me saying that the list has arrived are they got a list of people so I was happy to see my name and then I in the excitement I couldn't sleep much properly and yep I was again back in the college the next day uh yeah and again there were two rounds uh in the okay. interview process one is the technical round of course one is an HR round uh so again what was in this technical round this said and i can't i can't remember but yeah it was simple uh, they asked me few uh, java questions few python syntax questions okay uh, it was pretty simple they, they were just basics so where you asked to write a, a code a small snippets of it not the entirety okay mm. suppose if you had to uh, construct a class in java what would the uh, code be okay. you don't have to write the entirety you could just write the s- snippet of it So it was just to test whether you have the knowledge which you've mentioned in the yeah we were able to get some yes, but then the second round was uh, where I was screwed. <laughs> Sadly, uh, the second round is a horrific experience for me. The others were like completing the second round in fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, and then coming out. But then my second round literally took about fifty minutes, five zero, fifty minutes. The others were doing you it. You were the only interviewee or. Whether a group of interviews being interviewed by a single HR? No, no, no. Uh, the interviews are one on one. Okay. Mm. So I was like screwed for fifty minutes. Who was HR by the way? Yeah. <laughs> Is it an HR or a boy? Man. Why? <laughs> 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 okay. Boring stuff. Huh? Yep. Uh, so I was asked the questions that I wasn't expecting. Mm. Uh, the first shocker was. He just looked at my entire resume while I was just briefing it. The same thing, mm. Mm. Uh, telling about myself. Mm. The first question he asked me after seeing my resume is, mm. "What do you do if some company offers you more than what we offer?" <laughs> <laughs> I should have realized that I will be screwed then and there. Okay. But then I, you know, managed to impress him. Try to impress him by saying, "What was your answer?" by saying that yeah coming to the answer i just said uh, depending upon the role mm-hmm. and uh, micron has good values mm-hmm. they imparted a pretty <laughs> nice impression in my mind and <laughs> <laughs> i tried to impress the guy but then he could he, re- he understood the reality no. yeah he understood that you are bluffing yep anyone would <laughs> oh, come on <laughs> it's okay so everyone be prepared This question will be asked. They will ask you this question for sure. Okay, yeah. so now, now you have. Uh, I tell you this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we have gone through the situation. Uh, so what would the what would be the best answer at that time? Uh, best answer would be uh, to just say that, uh, depending upon the company, depending upon the role, mm. and if it's a. a uh, better role better company you'll obviously switch up mm. and obviously better pay as well mm. so i have one of my friends who ha- who are actually selected in micron mm. who were asked the same question mm. and he told literally he told why would i work for your company if i get a some other higher package <laughs> and he got selected <laughs> but don't take this as notes <laughs> and don't take this as notes uh, just be optimistic uh, don't be uh, don't give a blunt answer mm. just try convincing him mm. but then again You know they are experienced people. They have also moved from companies which offered mm-hmm. higher packages from one company to others. So and they'll understand your intentions. So just be clear that you will be uh, looking upon the different aspects of the company, the role, the growth, as well as the pay. So you screwed up the last round of my growth, obviously. <laughs> so then what next? Oh, that was another depressing day for me. Uh, you can't tell how much depressed I was. uh people uh getting selected and then you know so how many were selected for micron from our college uh, i guess uh 12 if i'm not sure and the package is 9 9 okay 
So around 12 people got selected and I was well, maybe the 13th guy. <laughs> so all of them were regulars or were there any IDP students among those? Uh, they were IDP students as well. Okay. So yeah, let's let's go forward, forward with another <laughs> depressing story. Yeah. Okay, so another depressing story started in 2021 of mm-hmm. March uh, where uh, a JPMC was also first to arrive. Mm-hmm. And then they were offering around 17 LPA Ooh. and the first technical round, I was able to ace it. Mm. And the second round was virtual interview okay. where you will be asked to record a video on a platform like Hire Pro mm. and they will be reviewing your uh, responses mm. of different people mm. uh, through the video interviews mm-hmm. and they will shortlist a few people mm. and then there is this hackathon round. I guess you must have heard it for good. good. Yeah, you must have heard it from Barb Baby. So she was lucky to be selected. I was kicked out in the wall. <laughs> virtually. <laughs> virtually <laughs> what do you think? Was Barb Baby was the reason you were not selected for the world? No, not at all. Because uh, it never think like that. It, if it is, you can't blame the other person for you not being selected. You have to blame yourself for not being on the no, I'm just kidding. I'm yeah. done with Barnaby Sarkar. I'm giving suggestions. <laughs> I get sorry, I take your authentic. I get. <laughs> I get what you're trying to say, but yeah, th- that is not the way one should take it, right? Mm-hmm. You just have to. If you're not selected, you have to blame yourself. Mm-hmm. You 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 need to understand that you're not on the level of mm-hmm. the people who are selected. That's mm-hmm. how you need to take it, and then that's how you need to move forward. Mm-hmm. So that was another depressing story. Coming to another depressing no. story. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I didn't beep into this depressing story. <laughs> there are lots of depressing stories because of before the actual success came. Oh, so there is this another company called Davin Box. Oh, sorry. <laughs> now, first, let's finish this quote for uh, finish this thing about quote for good uh, hackathon. Mm-hmm. Uh, very. Uh, did you participate in this hackathon? No. Why? Because I was not selected in the previous round. You were not selected. Okay. Yeah, you you didn't finish the virtual. I yeah, I didn't clear that round. Okay. I did my virtual interview, but then I was not selected for. I was not one among the se- selects who were selected for Code for Good. Okay. Mm. So yep, that the virtual interview was the end for me. Okay. Mm. Yep. So again, that's how it went with JPMC. Mm. Now coming to another <laughs> depressing story. <laughs> <laughs> this time it's Darwin Watts. Okay. Mm. Uh, Darwin Box was like, uh, you know, that day I told about TCS interview, right? Mm-hmm. Rainy day. Mm. Darwin Box uh, aptitude test was on the same day. On the same day as the TCS interview. Okay. So I had finished my TCS interview by around 2 p.m. Mm. And then the Darwin Box inter- uh, aptitude test was around 7 p.m. Mm. So I was unlucky to clear it. Mm. Uh, Darwin Box is around 16 lakhs LBA. 16 LPA mm. uh, when it comes under super dream okay so I was kicked out in the first round as well I didn't get selected for the interviews so why we got to you maybe I couldn't do the code were the questions too difficult or were you exhausted after the tiring interview uh, maybe both and the questions were difficult but uh, yeah I was ty- tired after the interview as well okay. but somehow again the MCQs the core subjects questions were difficult Maybe I couldn't do that. Okay. Did someone else do that um, from our college? Darren Works. Yes. Yeah, there are three selects from Darren Works from our college. Okay. Right now. All of them 16 LPA. Yep. What was the role? I'm not sure. The role was not being mentioned. Okay. So, wait a minute. Then it is a Oracle. No, if it's just another depressing story. <laughs> we'll end it here. No, this is this is like the most depressing story. No, th- there are a lot of <laughs> depressing stories. I will not like to bother you with more. Okay. I'll just uh, sum it up in two uh, minutes if I can. Mm. There is this another company called Ceramosic which had offered 30 LPA. Mm. 30, literally 30. Oh. And uh, it mainly focused on, uh, it offered one role from CSE department and two from EC. Okay. So their focus was people who get, who know about TensorFlow and PyTorch, machine learning libraries. Okay. Mm. To be very honest, nobody else in our batch has uh, done TensorFlow. I was one of the few who could do that. Mm. And so it was like a sheer shot for me. Mm. 
if the company comes and takes the interviews i i was like pretty confident that i will get selected mm. but after two months of when they announced that they will be hiring from our campus they just dropped a bomb saying that they are not interested in the csc role <laughs> they will be only looking for one role which is of ec department both <laughs> imagine my situation <laughs> and the depression don't doesn't end there there is this another company called gainsight which is offering 15 lpa uh the pre placement talk and the first and the second rounds of interview was scheduled on 22nd of august which was my birthday well in the like so i was wearing formals on my birthday uh attending the pre placement talks giving the interviews i was on t- from morning 9 o'clock to evening 7 o'clock i was in this college you know how tiresome it could be i made lots of plans to hang out with friends etc but then this company yet arrived you, you i was like okay if i can get this there are many more birthdays to come i could celebrate them yeah i thought i will be knocked out in the first round itself because i was not confident of that i did it quite well but luckily i was selected for the second round which happened around 6:30 in the evening uh, luckily i got a good inter- interviewer he was quite friendly he was helping me with the thinking process he was giving me subtle hints so i was able to do that well and the third day uh, i mean which is on the second third round of interview which is on uh, 23rd of august uh which is the hr round uh there is this instance where we don't know who the people who be, who are selected for the hr round mm. i live close to the college so i was just traveling 10 minutes one of my friend had to travel 2 hours to get to the college only to realize that she is not selected for the hr round oh. mm. so you know how the situation is she weeped and then she left back mm. but then i since it's a hr round i was preparing for the hr type of questions mm-hmm. you, uh since i had already attended a few companies you know how the hr questions will be right but then again the bomb dropped in the hr round uh it took around one it was an around one round sorry it was around one hour and the hr questions were 5 minutes the rest 55 minutes were technical questions which i was not even prepared of okay so yeah i couldn't do that well i know i couldn't do that well but again it depends on how well the others could do also right mm mm-hmm. if the others were in the same level as me i had some hope that i would be selected but then yeah others could do well and better than me there were around three selects five, three selects yeah three selects and maybe again i was the fourth one <laughs> i was knocked out okay and uh, you know the interesting part uh 23rd of august evening 6:30 i got to realize that i was not selected for gain site 24th of august was the oracle interview <laughs> 22nd 23rd 24th okay so your entire placement season was a roll, was like a roller coaster right <laughs> exactly <laughs> too many i said too many too too many lows few minus <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's the way in life as that well. mm-hmm. uh, so yeah again on 24th uh, uh, there was uh, a first round of interview which was technical i was pretty shocked that a company which is offering 18 lpa was asking such simple questions you're talking about oracle oracle yes mm-hmm. the questions were very simple yesterday i itself i got grilled in green side man and today are was two simple questions okay simple, simple questions in listen uh there was this one question there were two questions one is uh, count the number of occurrences of an alphabet in a given string that's it that's it that's the question i could code it in python in around 6 to 7 lines mm-hmm. that was one question the second question i can't remember but then uh, i knew i passed the first round because the interviewer told me that prepare a few topics for the second round mm-hmm. which were quite difficult topics again mm-hmm. so i i was nervous mm-hmm. i was uh, eating lunch again being nervous and then the time for the second round came mm. i even in the second round it was quite simple because it focused more on the core subjects okay. and the knowledge on core subjects which i could do well okay. and uh, i knew i will be called in for third round as well but then again there were few instances where all of my other friends were getting done with the second round itself they were being told to leave out of the waiting room mm. waiting room in the sense it was all the virtual process mm. we have virtual in the waiting rooms in zoom 
So they were being told to vacate out of the waiting room. Even before my second round was started. Okay. So when I was told to leave the waiting room after the second round, you know the tension started kicking again. <laughs> Well, am I there? Am I not there? Is this the end of the round? Are there only two <laughs> rounds? Are there three rounds? I don't know. Few people are saying we had three rounds. Few people are saying the second round was last. Okay. So again, I decided to take a nap. But you know how the tension is going to be like. So I couldn't. I just, uh, in order to calm down myself, I watched Drive to Survive. Okay. A few episodes of Drive to Survive. But again, I could literally feel my heartbeat hmm. running. Because I don't know whether there is a third round or not. Few people are saying we've been called in for the third round as well. Mm. Few people are saying we've been asked to uh, go out of the virtual ro- room in the second round. I do understand after all these uh, depressing stories. Yeah. You you kind of feel that self-doubt upon yourself. Yes. Uh, am I really lagging something? Yes. Uh, h- how did you handle uh, that that kind of situation? I, I was unable to handle like, you know, I just, fi- I, you'd have to deviate your mind to something else. And like I said, I could feel my heart beating. My heart was racing. So, that's why since my heart was racing, I thought about a racing documentary series to drive to survive so that I could shift my heart racing to something else. Okay. But then again, when I was literally thinking that there will be no more rounds, I got a call from some unknown number saying that you have a third round to do Heta HR round. Join within 10 minutes. And then again, you know, the interviews are like on camera, right? I was, you know, changed into something where I could wear the homes. So I just quickly got the shirt again, wore it, and then uh, dropped in for the third round. Mm. And the third round was quite comfortable because uh, they asked, the HR round was really the HR round. Mm -hmm. They asked the HR questions. (laughs) It it, it was quite simple. And uh, the interviewer I had uh, was uh, the team lead, I I should say. Mm. She was quite friendly. She was cracking uh, jokes here and then to lighten up on the mood. Uh, so she was quite uh, enthusiastic mm. and she dropped the optimistic saying saying that I am leaning towards bringing you into our team but then I have to talk to others as well to consult their opinion. Mm. You know the situation right? <laughs> She's okay with it. What the other guy says, what the other people say mm. and again this particular role you don't know how many people they will take in. Okay. I had another friend of mine who was also called in for the third round. So if they had to, t- they were the only two people who were called in for the third round, mm. and they if they had to take in only one person, w- would I? Be, <laughs> would it be me? Would it be my friend? Well, you know how that feels, right? Again, you know, the HR is optimistic. She's leaning towards bringing you into into her team. Mm. You don't know what the other people feel in the team. Mm. You don't know how the how my friend has performed in the interview. Mm. So again, I was continuing to watch Drive to Survive, but then again. Cars were racing on the screen, my heart is racing. <laughs> and yet again, I heard the good news on 8.30, the same day, 24th of August, 8.30. Mm. Even before I could check my mail, there was one uh, uh, placement coordinator who texted me, congrats. Okay. I was trying not to get my hopes high, but you know, okay. how it goes on A's and where is it still done? No, it's still continuing. I, the race ended when I uh, got the email, mm. opened the Excel sheet and then zoomed in to see my name. <laughs> then the race ended mm. and then uh, quickly I burst into an te- uh, you know okay, okay. I burst into I burst into tears and then my mom was super happy mm. and luckily the other friend which uh, I was with in the third round she also got selected okay. so we were the only two people who co- who made it to the third round and we were the only two people to get selected for the tour okay so we were lucky and we were happy for each other as well mm. Uh, yeah, so that is uh, the my leads happy ending. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that is the moment which defined, which escalated my curve up again. I don't know what would have happened if uh, I couldn't make it. But yeah, there are many more opportunities. But then that was like a turning point for me. After facing all these downfalls, after facing all these depressing moments, that was like, I have achieved something. Now, <laughs> That is the moment of me. <laughs> okay, cool. So, yep. The only uh, company which I attended after Oracle was MathWorks because I was pretty sure that Oracle was not uh, offering internship. Mm. And MathWorks was like pretty offering only internship. Mm. So, I applied for that. But then that is another story because the, we had written the test. But then 
he completely ignored the test. I don't know why he had forgotten about it. So, uh, yeah, there was not uh, uh, an information again regarding that. And talking about the Excel sheet which I was using to prepare uh, SD, yeah, SD, yeah, my, SD, my SD. My personal SD sheet, uh, 23rd was the last date that I opened that sheet. <laughs> 23rd, literally 23rd, 23rd or 24th? 24th, the Oracle day. Uh, before when uh, I had the time between the first round and the second round. That was the last day I opened that sheet. Till now, I didn't even open it. <laughs> So you, you have applied for around 7 to 8 companies? Yes. Okay. So, the most bothering question mm-hmm. by the majority of the students. Mm-hmm. Uh, did your CGPA really matter? Uh, no. No. The, uh, CGPA, well, uh, most companies put a threshold on CGPA which is quite low. Which obviously everyone will have CGPA about that. Or I think had put a threshold about 6.5. Mm-hmm. You know people who, I mean, everyone gets her. Almost everyone has the GPA above 6.5. Uh, everyone. Uh, there was this gain, company, Gainsight. I um, mean, yeah, we talked about it, which put a threshold about 7 CGPA, I guess. Hmm. So yeah, CGPA doesn't matter. Okay. But again, uh, you need to have uh, good knowledge in the core subjects, uh, which again, if you have good knowledge in your core subjects, obviously your CCPA will go up, right? So it's interdependent. Yes. Not quite dependent, but yeah, indirectly dependent. Hmm. So yeah. <laughs> uh, what's so special about Northern Tools that they are still willing to work there, even though you have placed a character? Uh, yeah, so Northern Tool is another company which uh, came in late and was offering internships. They needed seven guys from CSE uh, and I was one of them. Uh, well, yeah, so Northern Tool is another decent company where uh, it is a, a flexible company. You don't have, uh, you have all kinds of freedom. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, companies where they will monitor your your presence online. Mm-hmm. You have to update the time sheets. In Northern Tool, there's nothing Especially like that. with these interns. Yes, exactly. Uh, in Northern Tool, there's nothing like that. Mm-hmm. They were offering quite good stipend, not uh, a highest level, but then uh, it was about 25 per month, mm-hmm. 25,000 per month. And the facilities are quite good, I must say. You know, uh, is it a virtual internship or you have to go to the office? It's in hi- hybrid mode. Okay. Uh, Monday and Friday, I work from home. You have, uh, you need to go to office on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. You not, you need not go. You could go to office on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay. And that is again half of the day you spend in office. Again, you travel back home, and half of the day you spend in home. So it's uh, even in hybrid, it's more leaning towards home. Again, the facilities were like quite good because they provide you cab facilities mm-hmm. to go to office. They provide you lunch. Where is this office? Uh, in Coca Pit. Okay. This uh, uh, Dutch Burmese. Uh, so they provide you free cab. Mm-hmm. You could travel happy in the cab to the office. Mm-hmm. They provide you free lunch, mm-hmm. which you can happily eat. <laughs> so, you know, uh, and talking about com- uh, lunch, there is you can find it's a buffet menu. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, till now, every Wednesday, I could eat chicken biryani. <laughs> so, the, the, I mean, you can see the value. It's a product-based company. The value that the company offers to its employees as well as interns. We are almost treated as employees. Even the employees get the cab facilities. And, uh, you know, uh, some companies, they offer it for the employees, but not for the interns. We are treated on, level, on the same level as employees. Where we are being, yeah, all, all the services. And... It's not even been a month since I've joined Northern and then within this one particular month we had gone on a sports day outing. Mm. Uh, so yeah, even we were involved in the uh, sports. Mm-hmm. I was playing badminton. Yeah, so the values that the company uh, the possesses uh, yeah, are quite good. Okay, seems interesting. I, I have another hypothetical question. So just in case. Okay. Northern Tools mm-hmm. uh, decides to match your package to that of Oracle. Okay. What would you choose? Uh, I don't know because uh, this hypothetical question which you've been asked uh, has been running in my mind since the day I got selected for Northern. Yeah. Uh, uh, I am in a stage right now where I can't decide. Mm. But yeah, Northern is pretty good. It's a uh, pretty good place to work in. Uh, but I don't know about Oracle. Uh, again, talking about Northern, Northern is a smaller company mm-hmm. uh, where you have a, 
100 employees working in India mm-hmm. and around the co- entire company consists of around 3,000 employees. Mm-hmm. Uh, the rest of them are in two headquarters in the US, that's it. There are no more loca- locations. Mm-hmm. Whereas in Oracle, you know how big the company is. I've been to the Oracle office. Uh, one of my cousin works there. Okay. And it's a huge campus. There is a basketball court. And there is an entire floor of food court. <laughs> yeah, that you have a gym. I mean, it's amazing. Such a big MNC. And of course, they provide you with all the facilities. Yes. So again, it depends on uh, the role and the decision which I am going to take. And also the experiences which I will be getting from Northern within the four, three months that I'm still left with my internship. Yep, so that's, I, I can't answer this question. This is because of it, as hypothetical it is to you, it is hypothetical to me as well. Mm. Uh, yep, so, but yeah, Northern is pretty good company to work in. It has high quality, uh, it has high standards for its employees. Mm. And uh, yeah, talking about the values, that it's quite good. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, what, what would be your advice to all the freshers who are aspiring to to get placed in their dream companies. Okay. Yep. So for the freshers uh, uh, who are who need who want to get placed, yes. I mean not just freshers. Uh, uh, it it it's like what what would be the right uh, pathway for the fresher and for someone who's in their second year and also for someone who's in their third year. Okay. For someone who's a fresher, uh, just in the first year of B Tech, enjoy B Tech. That's uh, that's one place where you can you need to enjoy it. but then again don't compromise on what you need to do okay. uh, give it keep doing stuff mm. uh, keep learning technologies languages mm. Mm. Uh, again my suggestion would be to start with C and then move on to the simple languages coming to the second year you have uh, your core subjects in second year much of your core subjects are focused in second year you have uh, DS you have uh, algorithms you yeah, have a computer net- networks. Networks is in third year. Operating. Operating systems, you have DBMS. These are the co- uh, core subjects. If you don't have any coding, uh, I mean, apart from coding questions, these are the uh, aspects on which your knowledge is tested in for the placements. So be highly thorough with these subjects. Uh, and again, uh, focus most on your core subjects in the second year and whatever the rest of the time you have, start exploring with DSA and as well as as you are exploring DSA there are different fields in computer science like web development, machine learning, mobile development etc. Get a taste of each of them Mm. see which one you like Mm. and then choose by the by the time you reach your third year you must have an idea about uh, which aspect of computer science will suit you which one you are you will be good at so go in third year uh, don't take any experiments go with the one which you find interesting, uh, become uh, somewhat good in that because uh, you need your resume to reflect on, apart from, uh, most people think DSA is good enough for interviews. But then again, yeah, DSA is good, but then what but that can only be enough for the first round? Yes. Uh, when it comes to interviews, uh, the one that distinguishes yourself from the other one is how uh, well-versed you are in a domain. Let's say about machine learning or web development. You need to have that competitive edge. So, which is why I suggest you to uh, fix to one domain in in your third year and then focus on that, as well as not compromising on your DSA, giving it some part here and there. And you know how is it how it is in fourth year, right? With the placements, the placements start in four one itself. Sometimes even before you start your fourth year. But yeah, again. Uh, for the people who are attending placements, I would like to say that, yeah, don't get depressed like me if you couldn't make one company. Uh, yeah, depression is quite common, but then don't take it to the extremes, right? Mm-hmm. If, you know, life is more than just placements. If you, every day is a new opportunity, if you could get, if not today, some other day. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's most important in life, right? You need to, uh, the feelings that you are able to provide to the closest ones and how good you are with it. Not not just making money or being in a company, right? So you need to understand the broader aspect of what life is. Mm. So uh, then, again, uh, you'll have many more opportunities to come. Don't get depressed with not being selected for one company or anything. 
opportunities will keep coming your way just make sure you use every opportunity to the fullest so that would be my advice okay so i think uh, that's it we are done with all the questions and uh, thank you anna thank you for all the valuable insights <laughs> and uh, thank you for sharing your roller coaster <laughs> and uh, i'm glad you you finally uh, uh, got placed in your dream company yeah anna congratulations thank you all the best and i would like to thank you as well because uh, i was thinking about sharing my interview experiences with some some of the juniors as well because uh, through an article or through a blog post mm. but then because be, because of being busy with the internship and other stuff i was not able to ra- pen down mm. my thoughts but then again uh, since I, you have approached me with the same idea and uh, yeah i'm pretty i am again i'm pretty grateful for this opportunity as well thank you thank you <laughs>